So this one is coming out a little late and I do apologize for that. But basically today I have an update to my Elder Kai priority list or just, you know, a tier list uh, for the units that you should use Elder Kai's on. So I hope you guys do enjoy today's video as always. And if you do, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. And shout out to Zenrot for the big help on making this list. I added units, I removed units, but overall we came to a conclusion on what you should be prioritizing with your Kai. So big shout out to him. I will be leaving his Twitter and YouTube channel in the comment section and description down below as always. And in comparison to last time, I am going to be doing things a little differently. Basically this time around, I'm just going to be going through every single type. Whereas before, I just kind of had a god tier demigod and then of course you would have the units right at the bottom but for this video in particular i am going to be doing different tiers for every single type just because some of you guys may want to prioritize one or two types so hopefully this video is going to help you guys out as much as possible and keep in mind that lists like this are forever changing so when units do get to the point where they could potentially have kai's used on them i will definitely include them in a future video i may update this every two months or so but for now this is what we have to go with and of course we are going to go ahead and get started with agility and of course we have your xeno tier we have your god tier essentially and then we have your mortal slash ningen tier so it's pretty straightforward in your xeno tier you have legendary rare margin vegeta and unfortunately he kind of got shafted in comparison to the other summonable legendary rares and one of the reasons why is because the other ones do have farmable super attacks up to 10 i mean you can technically get two to super attack 10 and then of course um, feed the other one into one of them which will get into 20 but the majority of the time you're going to be prioritizing a dupe system path just because it benefits the unit way more but when it comes to LR margin Vegeta in particular it is a bit harder to get him to super attack 20 just because there isn't a farmable margin Vegeta at the moment granted if you summoned enough you can go ahead and just feed him the tech ones and I would imagine that some of you that went half of this guy probably have a bunch sitting around so there is that option but once you get to 10 it is definitely a lot harder to get into 20 and of course in this case you will have to go ahead and use Kai's to get him all the way there and then of course we have the gods here we have Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Super Vegito, we have Super Saiyan Rose and of course we have Super 17 as well. Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta pretty straightforward one of the best cards in the game one of the hardest hitters in the game. I honestly don't have too much to say about this guy just a great card overall and then we move on to Super Vegito, who is still one of the best cards in this game just aged super well and there was like a few misconceptions when it came to his counters and it was mostly revolving around whether or not super attack level affected affected his counter attack and basically his counter damage is based on how high his attack stats is for example it can go anywhere between 50,000 to 150,000 and that comes down to the boost that he gets from maybe you know um, passive skills item boost stuff like that you know of course leader skill boost comes into that as well and that is what actually affects his counter damage and the thing about immense is that it doesn't really start to show how powerful a unit is up until super attack five or six i, I reckon it's more around six so to fully optimize units with immense damage you definitely do need to get up to the higher super attack levels and despite Vegito not getting a like any type of attack boost from his own passive he can still hit extremely hard because of his 12 key multiplier his high attack stats and the fact that he also has immense damage and of course the same applies to super saiyan rise goku black he gets a 100 attack boost instead of just like no boost at all but even without that um, attack boost he would still hit pretty damn hard because he does have immense damage he does have a good 12 key multiply of 150 percent so those things do definitely come into account but that 100 percent attack boost definitely makes a massive difference when it comes to his overall damage output and then we move on to super 17 he probably has the lowest potential damage out of all of the units here. And it's kind of expected just because of the way that his card works. And of course, you have the build up where he has to get attacks multiple times to get to that 120% attack boost. And he does have a semi farmable super attack. But if you don't summon enough, you may not be capable of getting those super 17s or those Andrew 17s that token into the super 17s. So, of course, you will have to go ahead and maybe use a few guys here and there. But he is still a unit that you will have to prioritize with Kai's nonetheless. Especially if you don't pull many Andrew 17s that can token into the super 17s. But if we now move on to the mortal tier, and the special thing about Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Kai Ken, of course they have the exact same name, so when special events do come around, you can farm, well I say farm, but you can buy the physical Super Saiyan Blue Gokus from the barbershop, and you can actually use those ones to feed into Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Kai Ken, because of course they do have the same name, so you can go down that route, but the thing about that is that 
these events are like super rare. Well, I want to say they're super rare, but they happen so often that it's just worth investing Kai's in them. And of course, they are still some of the hardest hitting agility type units. And then we have Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, who in comparison doesn't hit as hard as uh, Super Saiyan Blue Kai Ken or Super Saiyan Blue Goku, but he does provide a massive boost to Super Saiyan Blue Goku just because of how many attack links they share together. So it's definitely worth giving him those Kai's if you don't really have anyone else to prioritize. But now, if we move on to the tech types, and of course, in the Xeno tier, we have LR, Goku, Black, and Zamasu. And I know that Zen may disagree with this, but I did put him there in the end. I just definitely feel like having him at Super Attack 10 is just so beneficial, especially if you want to run a tech, um, tech type team, pardon me. And of course, when he does get hit a specific amount of times, he just hits crazy hard. I've seen him hit for over 2 million. And if, of course, because his free ability is critical hits as well, he just has a ton of damage potential there. In the God tier, we have Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and you're probably wondering where Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku is maybe and of course I will be going over that in a few moments and then in the last tier we have Mask Saiyan, Super Saiyan 3 Adult Gotenks and LR Goku I know that LR Goku is a bit iffy to some people just because of how hard he is to farm but keep in mind that the first 10 super attack levels are now extremely easy to um get because of how they changed the legendary rare event and it is a bit of a shaft to the players that went their entire way and farmed the first stage uh, when it was first released because that first stage like the drop rate is just so bad that i'm surprised that anyone could do that especially if you farm too if you farm too like congrats because that is such a terrible grind but yeah when it comes to lr goku he is still optimal on on that hero team but i don't know how much longer he is going to stay optimal for because they could still potentially release a super tech lr that isn't goku or maybe they will upgrade goku in the future something along those lines but i can definitely see them release a new super tech lr in the future and he, that LR in particular could potentially dethrone Goku. But for now, he is definitely worthy of a spot. Mask saying he does have a flat out attack boost, but it's high enough for him to warrant Kai's. This man is just so damn good. He hits super high, he can tank as well. Super Saiyan 3 Adult Go Tank just an absolute beast. I'm surprised they're releasing this soon, but he does get a 100% attack boost. Super Saiyan 3 Go Tank is pretty straightforward. This guy can hit super hard, especially when he is fully maxed. Of course, he was the original Tech God lead, and he's just aged extremely well. Links super well to Tech Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, and he is definitely a unit that you want to use Kai's on if you want to run a tech team or you just don't have anyone else to use Kai's on. So now this is where things get interesting. There is actually no one in that Ningen slash Mortal tier, and one of the reasons why is just because in is such a specific group and there are like such a specific set of units that actually need Kai's or require Kai's or the others just maybe have farmable super attacks hence why they don't need Kai's that it's just limited to such a small amount of units and I suppose it's not exactly a bad thing because that means that you can prioritize Kai's for other units of other types but for the ink group in particular this is what we have to go with in the Xeno tier of course we have your boy LR Gohan in the God tier we have Super Gogeta, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and Kid Buu of course Kid Buu is in the exact same situation as Super 17 he does have that semi farmable super attack but keep in mind that you may not pull enough to get his super attack to um, 10 of course so Kai's are definitely still warranted in this particular situation and keep in mind that you may be able to get his super attack to like 5 or so uh, if you pull enough of the buff boo of course but you will still have to go that whole way with the elder kai's which isn't necessarily a bad thing because he is a new god lead and he will of course hit hard once you get into super attack 10 and again like i said before keep in mind that these lists are constantly changing with every unit that comes out so in the future there could definitely be someone worthy of that um, mortal slot and I know that some people may disagree with that but me and Zen went over it multiple times just to make sure that this list was perfect for you guys and this is what we came up with and now we move on to the STR type which is legit the opposite of in so of course in the Xeno slots we have LR Broly and if you haven't figured that out already pretty much every single legendary rare is going to be in that Xeno slot we have Super Saiyan 4 Goku, Super Gogeta, and STR Super Janemba in that mid-tier slot, or god tier. And of course, Super Janemba again, he does have um, that semi-farmable super attack. But again, like Super 17 and Kid Buu, he may not pull enough, so we've gone over that before, of course. Super Saiyan 4 Goku, still one of the hardest hitting units in the game. I believe he's still top 5, which is just absolutely crazy. And he is probably going to stay there for the longest time. 
And of course, every single unit here has the ability to crit. Of course, you have Gogeta with the built-in crit, essentially. And then in the Mortal tier, we have Omega Shenron, we have Perfect Cell, LR Freezer, Super Saiyan, GT Trunks. We have Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and Beerus. Beerus does have a semi-farmable super attack, but that 200% attack boost is just insane, despite it being RNG. So you may have a few tech Beerus um, left over that you can feed into the STR one, but you may want to go the entire way with Kai's. And like LR Goku, LR Freezer's stage has been updated, so you can farm his Super Attack to 10 with a lot of ease. And if you want to do that entire run twice, you definitely can go ahead and do so. But I think this one pretty much speaks for himself. I spoke to multiple people and they thought that Cell could have potentially been higher. But in comparison to Super Saiyan 4 Goku, Gogeta and Super Gen Ember, I just don't think that he is on the same level when it comes to priority. So I definitely feel like he's fine where he is at the moment. Of course, you have Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, who is also a hard hitter. It's a shame that he doesn't have a partner on that particular team, but he still works super well and I would imagine that some of you are probably wondering where the STR Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is and unfortunately he just isn't as good in comparison to some of these units. He has a 12k multiplier of 130%. He does get a 70% attack boost from his own passive and he does have immense but in comparison to some of these units his damage is still kind of underwhelming. So he does miss out slightly when it comes to this particular list. So now moving on to the physical type and of course because we do not currently have a summonable physical legendary rare there is no one there at the moment but if we move on to the god tier of course we have super saiyan 3 gotex vegeto blue cooler broly full power freeze and super saiyan gotex when it comes to super saiyan gotex you can use the um, super saiyan gotex that dokens from the trunks and goten but that is a massive grind so you may want to use kais instead maybe you want to go halfway with the gotenxes and then use kais something along those lines Full power freezer, immense damage, 120% attack boost, shares a ton of attack links with Final Form Cooler, making one of the best partnerships in the game. You have Broly, who can super attack twice, so it's definitely still worth investing Kai's into him. You have Final Form Cooler, who does kind of have a semi-farmable super attack and a farmable one, but the farmable one is just, like, the drop rate is so bad that it's not worth doing. So if you do have a few end coolers left over and you want to awaken them into Final Form Coolers, you can definitely go ahead and do that. But for the majority of the players that pull this guy, they are definitely going to use Kai's just because it is um, a massive hassle to get this guy to super attack 10 without using Kai's. Of course you have Vegito Blue who is still one of the best cards in the game. He is the hero lead super attack multiple times. It's just definitely worth investing Kai's into him and he is kind of in the same situation as Super Vegito because he does not get an attack boost but he can super attack multiple times but again because of how high his 12 key multiplier is, his attack stats and other things of course he is definitely worth investing Kai's into. And then, of course, we have Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, who is one of the hardest hitters in the game. He is the only one that can really challenge Super Saiyan 4 Goku consistently. And despite him being a card that not too many people were fans of, just because of how we got a Tech Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks not too long ago, it definitely is worth it to give him Kai's. But then, of course, in the Mortal slots, we have Elok Ginyu and Arale. Arale does have a farmable super attack, but it's just way too hard. The drop rate is so bad for her. The majority of the time, you're going to be getting Goku, so it definitely is worth giving her Kai's. And then, of course, with Elok Ginyu, you're going to have a hell of a time actually getting this guy to a legendary rare. But once you get him to that point, of course, you want to get him to super attack 20. And now the last page where I just want to go over a few units that you may want to consider giving Kai's to. Of course, you have Rage Trunks with a farmable super attack. You have Tech Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku with a farmable super attack as well. You have Cooler, you have Tech Super Saiyan 3 Broly. And these are the guys that do have farmable super attacks, but they are just like so hard because of how much Zenny, training items, and of course, awakening medals it takes that you may want to use Kai's instead. But keep in mind that these guys do have farmable super attacks, but it definitely is better. Well, not, I wouldn't say it's better, but it's more convenient for you to use Kai's on them just because of how much of a grind it is and because of how many resources it takes. But as always, I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. Definitely let me know in the comment section down below if you found this video useful or not. And if you feel like certain units should be in specific tiers or if I should add or remove certain units, do let me know in the comment section down below. Big shout out to Zenrot again. But as always, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.